Despite Smeargle being historically one of the strongest and, frankly, the most hated competitive Pokemon, it seems to be failing to make waves in the current competitive format of Regulation FVGC. It may have access to nearly every single move in the game, allowing for it to be one of the most flexible support Pokemon in existence, but the conditions in the metagame are taking its toll on its viability. Portland Regionals, the first major tournament of Regulation F, has just concluded, so let's take a look at how Smeargle did and discuss why it's in the situation it's in. If you enjoy this video at any point in time, be sure to leave a like and subscribe because I make tons of competitive Pokemon content. But first... This channel is partnered with Gamersups. If you want to support my work and get great tasting drinks, you can order Gamersups through my link in the description down below or with code MOXIEBOOSTER at checkout for 10% off. Gamersups is a caffeinated product that I recommend only to my 18 plus viewers, but my link will send you to their caffeine free product section just in case. Every product purchased through my link supports my channel financially, so I'd really appreciate the support. Now back to the video. Okay, we are, we are checking out Smeargle. We're going to be exposing this dude. Smeargo is on Fraud Watch today, that's what we're talking about, so yeah, I already said this in the intro, make sure you do it, leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications, and yeah, let's let's get into this. So Smeargo is a Pokemon who is historically very good in VGC, I don't know why, I don't know why Smeargo is good, it could be the uh, access to literally every single move in the game, uh, you know, every single support move too, but I feel like we need to discuss its place in the metagame at the moment, so what caused me to talk about this? Well, for one... Um, I, I don't see Smeargle that much. And for two, I saw it at Portland Regionals, but only a few times. So, I believe in... There's no Smeargle in Top Cut, which is understandable. In Day 2, there was a total of, I believe, two Smeargles. One on Enrico's team, one on Ryan Hebert's team, and actually, no, there's three. So, there's three Smeargles total. Um, however, there are some similarities in the way that the teams function uh, with the exception of Ryan Hebert's team Ryan Hebert's team is actually unique as far as Smeargle teams go um, but the one pattern I wanted to note before we start is I think that Smeargle is viable um, next to Golden Go Golden Go Smeargle we see it here on uh, Ian McLaughlin's team and I actually faced this guy I, I lost to him uh, he played super well but Golden Go Smeargle is like a really solid lead because Smeargle has access to like fake out uh, with follow me wide guard and stuff uh, and that allows for the Golden Go to basically always get up a free make it rain. Uh, unless you're facing Urshifu. Urshifu will just annihilate that Smeargle with no regrets. It will just pa 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 break it, sash, and then like Oko it. Uh, or three hit KO it, but with one hit. Uh, one attack. So Golden Go just gets that up and then, yeah, you, you get to do that sort of thing. Uh, beyond that, Enrico's team, similar vibe. You know, Metal Coat. Uh, actually, I believe they're like the exact same team, right? Yeah. So exact same team. Both made day two. And then Ryan Hebert's team is the exception here. Spore, Fake Out, Follow Me, Decorate. It's like a Trick Room-ish team with Smeargle for Rigoraf, Ursuna, Blood Moon. You kind of get the point. You like decorate through Protect, um, and then you attack with the Life Orb, Ursuna, Blood Moon. So those are like the three teams I saw in Top Cut. But it's weird because Smeargle was a lot more flexible in the past. You wouldn't just see it with like, you know, one or two Pokemon. You would see it on like a ton of teams because it was extremely flexible. Uh, the main set that you would have Smeargle run would be Spiky Shield, Fake Out, Spore, Follow Me, that sort of thing. Uh, and of course you'd run Moody. Now Moody was nerfed recently, uh, and by recently I mean Gen 7, uh, before it would increase any stat. But now it can't increase accuracy or evasion. Uh, and prior to that, uh, Smeargle was able to learn Dark Void. That's like the big Smeargle nerf that like really put it on its like, uh, on its like downward trend. Uh, Dark Void was of course... Uh, the signature move of Darkrai. So if we actually pull up Darkrai here, um, Dark Void, you can see it used to, well, now it's 50% accuracy, but it used to be 80 accuracy um, and would hit both opponents. So Smeargle instantly turn one could just put the entire team to sleep. We see that in um, VGC 2016 quite a bit. Like that was a terrifying Mon to face off against. And it had a lot of usage because of that fact. I mean, like, putting both opponents to sleep instantly, yeah, no, like, that's going to be good. Uh, and with Moody increasing uh, the accuracy and evasion of the Mon, it can make it either harder to hit, or it can make it really easy to land those Dark Voids, and after a few turns of Smeargle just existing, it will likely have, like, plus two speed, plus two accuracy, but even plus one accuracy was enough to basically guarantee everything goes to sleep all the time. Uh, so you have to keep that in mind. It was a very scary Mon. You could argue that Smeargle's... Um, Smeargle's presence was what led to Electric Terrain being given as like an ability like Tapu Koko and like Pink Urchin and stuff down the road because sleep was just kind of broken. So, you know, 
The Spirigo has a long history of nerfs. I might even make a full video on the history of it, but we'll talk about its uh, presence today. So Spirigo kind of just runs this moveset right now. Of course, uh, on the teams that we saw, Spiky Shield was swapped out for Wide Guard, uh, and it does have access to literally every form of Protect in the game, uh, with the exception of, you know, Protects that aren't coded into the game because their only user isn't, because Smeargle has to copy them from someone. But at the moment, Smeargle runs either like Wide Guard or Spiky Shield. Now, a big reason that Smeargle um, might be on the downward trend is because of competition. We'll, we'll talk about like the competition it has in the metagame currently. Uh, big one is Whimsicott, uh, and well, I guess we'll go in order why I consider each of these competition for Smeargle. Uh, for one, Smeargle, its stats are not good. It has 55 HP, 75 speed. Those are the only two acceptable stats in my opinion. 20 attack, 35 defense, 20 special attack, 45 special defense. It's not really living any hits, which is why you max out the HP, uh, max out the speed and give it a focus sash with like a little bit of defense wherever you can throw it. Um, yeah, even though you're focus sash, you still want to max out your HP in case it gets broken. You'll give like, you'll give it a, a minor chance of living like a resisted hit, you know, that sort of thing. Uh, so, uh, with that in mind, Smeargle with the 20 attack, 20 special attack, I don't care if you're belly drumming, you're not going to reach a stat where like you're that threatening with your attack stats. So yeah, it's like a pure support Pokemon. Meanwhile, other like kind of pure support Pokemon do have better bulk, better speed. And even though they don't have access to every single move in the game, they do have like stats to be somewhat threatening offensively, uh, notably Whimsicott with Moonblast. It has a 95 base power fairy move with stab on it. You know, even though it's only 77 base special attack, you could make the case to run like max special attack, max speed on the Whimsicott, where usually, you know, you kind of see like max HP sometimes, but uh, max special attack is also viable because you can still run your support moves that you want, your tailwinds, your encore, your protect, and still have Moonblast. Like that is it's going to be able to like pick up a KO on like Chen Pao like because it's like a stab move it's super effective meanwhile if Smeargle were to run Moonblast and it hit my Chen Pao I wouldn't really mind I'd be like oh that's cool I'm glad you don't have a better move like I don't know Spore or Fake Out or whatever so yeah Mousehold is also competition for Smeargle in a way because half of Smeargle's kit that it runs usually is going to be redirection Mousehold not only has better stats across the board um including speed and it will run like you know bulk and stuff um, like a, a similar move set or a similar EV spread to Smeargle, but Mousehold doesn't have to run the Focus Sash. It can run the safety goggles, uh, and it has Friend Guard to decrease the damage uh, that its partners take. So that is actually like really impressive. On top of that, it still has Follow Me. Uh, it still has you know Protect if you really you know obviously everything has Protect, uh, but it also has other tools that a Smeargle might run on Core and stuff. But it can even go on the offensive with Population Bomb or like Super Fang. So it's still able to run like a ton of really great support moves. Taunt is also another great one. U-turn is another great one. It, it still has access to a ton of moves. Um, it just doesn't have access to like sleep and stuff where, you know, despite the fact it doesn't have all those moves, it can actually be a scary Pokemon that can hit decently hard with Population Bomb. That's like a really scary move to switch in on, especially with Technician. But it has everything it needs to be. It has everything it needs to be like um, a similar Mon to Smeargle. Uh, and another thing, it's a normal type. So on those teams that I mentioned with Smeargle, uh, a Mousehold could actually fit like a lot of these. It might not have Fake Out and Spore, but next to Golden Go, historically Mousehold is pretty good. If you were to swap out the Smeargle for the Mousehold, well, well, it might not be able to support the other mons as well. Uh, the Golden Go gets much stronger. It's taking reduced damage. Uh, it is a normal type who's immune to ghost moves, obviously, so you can follow me away Shadow Balls from Fluttermane. Uh, and it'll likely be able to hit more. It'll likely be able to eat more hits than Smeargle itself. Uh, so, you know, keep these things in mind when you're using a Smeargle. There are other Pokemon that could take its place. Uh, another really, really big, like, reason that Smeargle might be falling off is the prevalence of Ogre Pond Wellspring, which is not only uh, a Pokemon that you could argue does redirection a lot better than Smeargle, uh, but also is a Spore immune Pokemon. So, and also it's a Grass type. So it's a Grass type with Follow Me. So basically, where Smeargle is a normal type with Follow Me, it can follow me away a Spore once before it goes to sleep. Ogre Pond can follow me away a Spore as many times as it wants to, unless it Terra's, because the Grass typing will make it so the Amoongus' Spore or the opposing Smeargle Spore will go into a Mon that just doesn't care. Uh, on top of that, it is, you know, a better redirector, I would say, uh, like as far as like eating hits. So like if Smeargle has to follow me away as Surging Strikes, it goes down. If Ogre Pond Wellspring wants to follow me as Surging Strikes, it just does not care. It also has great recovery with Horn Leech. It has this high crit move Ivy Cudgel that turns into a water type, and it also has access to 
spiky shield. So I'm not saying that it's direct competition, but like as far as like when you're choosing a redirector with um, tools that your team might need, the only trade off you're really making here is fake out and spore because despite Smeargle having every move in the game, it's 99% of the time going to run the same move set because that is like just sort of the optimal move set that uh, people have figured out. Uh, Furograph's another issue. I mean, it blocks fake out. It also usually runs safety goggles or some like other decent support move. Uh, maybe it's partner runs like, or support item. Maybe it's partner runs safety goggles. Uh, so Furograph can block the fake out and the partner's just spore immune. Uh, Tornadus is another Pokemon that absolutely can mess with the Smeargle. Taunt is awful for the Smeargle. Uh, they also have access to Covert Cloak. That's another big thing I didn't even think about before recording. The Covert Cloak makes it so Fake Out isn't as powerful in certain matchups. And yeah, Covert Cloak, Tornadus, Taunt, it just shuts down Smeargle. Smeargle doesn't get to play the game. While this thing also has access to like the same support moves that a Smeargle might run, you know, Taunt, uh, Tailwind is an option. Uh, Bleak Wind Storm is pretty huge. Yes, Smeargle gets Bleak Wind Storm, but it's Bleak Wind Storm is going to tickle you where this thing can actually take KOs. So yeah. And of course, Ur Urshifu Rabbit Strike, I already mentioned that. So you might be wondering, why wouldn't Smeargle just adapt to this competition and run different moves? Well, the big thing is in VGC, we play with open team sheets now. And I'm a fan of that. I'm not complaining. I love open team sheets, especially, you know, because I'm a former Smeargle hater. Now I don't mind it too much because I know what it's going to do. Uh, but Smeargle and closed team sheets could run so many moves like decorate. I would say Ryan Hebert's team like decorate would be a move that enclosed team sheet would be so much more valuable if it wasn't telegraphed so hard with the open team sheet on team preview. You see, you know, follow me, fake out, decorate and sport and you go, oh, wow, decorate. That's interesting. Um, I have a redirection mon with safety goggles, so I can just like continuously redirect the decorate into me or whatever or like, oh, I'll just like taunt it and I won't have an issue or, oh, I'll just make sure I KO it before it gets to go for that. Where like in closed team sheets, you can be like, oh, okay, the Smeargle's putting on a lot of pressure with Fake Out and Spore right now. Uh, maybe I should protect this turn and like next turn I can go on the offensive and not have to worry about uh, the possible Fake Out. You know, it's a lot safer. Meanwhile, the Smeargle will just be like, haha, side side target decorate. And then they get their Ursula to plus two and bam, you like lose the next turn. So yeah, open team sheets really, really mess with Smeargle's ability to run different moves. Um, I mean, like Ally Switch is like a move it could run. Uh, I, I'm trying to think of like other like decent like options. Uh, Baton Pass. I remember we even saw like a Heart Swap Smeargle at Worlds one year. I think that was 2016 or 2015 or something. Uh, but yeah, no, like there's a ton of moves that this thing could run that it just coaching is like a big one. Um, it just can't really do it now. Clear Smog would be interesting, but I think you would just run Haze usually. But yeah. Uh, speaking of moves that Smeargle could run, let's talk about moves that Smeargle cannot run that it would actually really enjoy if it could in this metagame. Uh, Revival Blessing is a big one. The developers at Game Freak said, oh yeah, uh, you know, Rabska, um, Palmot, those two guys, yeah, they get Revival Blessing. Rabska's not that great. Palmot is like the best Revival Blessing user we can think of at the moment. It has Fake Out and a decent speed tier and is actually, you know, a pretty hard hitter. But if we gave it to Smeargle, Amon with like a million tools, this one tool would break it. And I'm thinking, no, it wouldn't. I would actually be for Smeargle getting Revival Blessing to give it a minor buff. Actually, that's a pretty major buff. But like, if you really think about it, Smeargle, 99% of the time, would only get use out of Revival Blessing in closed team sheets because what are you dropping to run Revival Blessing? You dropping your Protect? Yeah, probably. Like, Wide Guard um, would be like the drop there. So Fake Out, Revival Blessing, Spore, Follow Me. Yeah, but like now you're a sitting duck if you're targeted into by like a Focus Ash uh, Mon, or not Focus Ash Mon, if you're targeted into by like a Safety Goggles Mon uh, who doesn't care about Spore, you know, you go down, it's it's over. Like you don't even get to click the move. You get much more value out of a Protect or a Protect clone like Wide Guard or Spiky Shield. You actually, Smeargle almost never ran Protect. It would always run like Spiky Shield because it's just better. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so that is another big thing. Other moves it wishes it got, Lovely Kiss. This was a really cool tech move that you would see in restricted formats where Smeargle is a lot more common. Um, Lovely Kiss is a move that is exclusive to the Jinx line, I believe. Uh, and it's a normal type move with the same accuracy as Sleep Powder that puts things to sleep. So Spore or Sleep Powder, the other two sleep moves that you see, um, Hypnosis sometimes, but like Hypnosis isn't that good. Uh, those moves are the best sleep moves in the game, but they cannot sleep Pokemon with safety goggles and they cannot sleep grass types. Lovely Kiss at the expense of not being as accurate as Spore, 
can sleep these mons, giving you a huge advantage in matchups where your opponent might think, okay, I'll switch into the safety goggles Incineroar or the Rillaboom to eat the, the sleep move. If I had to face like Lovely Kiss Smeargle, I would be terrified because like, I think that Smeargle would unironically run Lovely Kiss over Spore in this metagame to avoid the counterplay that you see being safety goggles, grass types, and of course, Terra grass, like that's huge for it. Um, so yeah, it wishes it had Dark Void. I don't even have to explain that. And I would say like the final move, um, King Shield. I mean, like King Shield's a great move. It also, it would be, it's like a protect clone that um, doesn't protect from status moves, but it lowers attack uh, on contact. Crafty Shield's another one. It would just block like status moves. Like these are great options uh, that it just doesn't get anymore. As far as moves that I think we could explore for Smeargle in the current metagame that are minor buffs, um, here are the four that I could really come up with. So Decorate, of course, you know, Ryan Hebert ran it. Uh, shout out to him. He's a cool guy. Uh, but Ryan Hebert, you know, Spore, uh, follow me, fake out, decorate. It's a cool move that even works in closed team sheets just because Smeargle does put a lot of pressure with the Spore. Um, you never really know when it wants to go for it. Of course, there are turns where it's just 100% safe. Uh, but yeah, like you have to be careful with that move. Burning Bulwark is another interesting one. Um, I think the main thing keeping this from being super viable is that it doesn't protect from status moves so spiky shield if you get like if you get like taunted into it's like okay well I, I avoided the taunt that turn maybe i can position better uh and avoid it next turn burning bulwark doesn't matter you get taunted um urshifu also just hits straight through it but if you are a smear goal into a matchup where there's like a rilla boom the other team burning bulwark is actually a really nice tool because it's like okay they need to fake out into the smear goal Burning Bulwark can just burn them on the fake out and then they're like screwed. Like they don't get to really attack with that mod anymore. It might have, you know, wood hammer in grassy terrain, but it still doesn't hit as hard as it wants to at half damage. Uh, another move that's interesting, Dragon Shear. A lot of Pokemon that learn Dragon Shear uh, are Dragon types. Like the majority of them, of course, are Dragon types. And the issue with running Dragon Shear to boost a partner uh, with a Dragon type is that most of the time, because Dragon Shear gives you plus two crit rate on your partner, you're going to want to run it with another Dragon type. So it's usually Dragon type next to another Dragon type. Uh, there are exceptions to this. Lapras gets Dragon Shear, Milotic gets Dragon Shear, uh, but they're not particularly fast Pokemon. I would say that Smeargle getting Dragon Shear, if it gets enough speed boost, it could run it next to the likes of like a Regidrago with like a Scarf. And then like your Regidrago has a chance to just 50% of the time crit its dragon energy you can even run razor claw reggie drago um and at that point you have 100 crits on your draco meteors uh and yeah that's like a pretty cool tech you could do uh but no like as far as like dragon cheer goes it's another one of those moves that's like you would have to drop specifically wide guard or your protect for it uh which is pretty scary you know you have to be really really cautious with that and a final move that i think is interesting upper hand uh 100 flinch uh that fails unless the target's using a priority move Smeargle is a pretty fast Pokemon, uh, consider as far as like fake out Pokemon go. Um, in the grand scheme of things, I think Upper Hand is actually like a pretty nice tech for Smeargle if you don't want to run like Terra Ghost. You can run Terra Grass to allow you to actually live the Urshu Searching Strikes, uh, but now you're susceptible to fake out. But most fake out Pokemon that are like viable in VGC uh, are going to be the likes of Incineroar, Rillaboom, Iron Hands. Pokemon that are usually slower than Smeargle. Rillaboom is actually like naturally faster than Smeargle, but it doesn't usually run Jolly Max speed. So if they like if they're running just like Adamant Nature with like some speed, uh, you see like it'll hit like 137. Well, at max speed, it's 137. Meanwhile, you know, Timid Smeargle or Jolly Smeargle, whatever, with max speed will hit 139. So you are actually always faster than the Rillaboom, meaning that you can stuff its grassy glides, its fake outs, fake out from anything. Um, and if you get a speed boost, you can actually stuff taunts from, um, taunts from Tornadus. I, I believe you can also stop Tailwind. I'm actually not sure. I think, I think it counts for prankster moves. I need to look into that. So that could be really interesting. It's sort of like a pseudo, a pseudo prankster taunt. You just go bam, bam, bam. But you need to be faster than the Tornadus, which kind of sucks because <laughs> Tornadus is very fast. Uh, you'll have to rely on speed boost for that, uh, use case. But yeah, uh, these are some moves you could really look into. I don't know. I feel that like Smeargle is just legitimately on fraud watch at the moment. We're going to have to wait for the metagame to adapt a bit. We're going to have to see if like it performs better in a restricted meta. But I will say right now, Smeargle does seem like a one trick pony, despite the fact that it should be a, an infinite trick pony. It is a pony with infinite saddles, infinite shoes, infinite, uh, infinite uh, hairstyles. I don't I don't know uh, what, what do you put on ponies? But yeah, no, his, his foot stance whack. 
His his haircut, whack. The way he can't even use Revival Blessing, whack. You know, meanwhile, Wibscott, he's nice as hell. But yeah, uh, that's my conclusion. If you guys enjoyed, leave a like, subscribe. Let me know what you about. Uh, let me know what you think about Smeargle uh, in the comment section down below. And of course, you know, subscribe to the channel and stuff. I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Also, I'm finally going to be streaming again tonight. I took a long break from streaming because of the holidays. Uh, I'm back tonight. So make sure you check that out. We'll be going live at like 6 p.m. CST. So probably like an hour after this video goes live. Anyways, see you then. Bye.